Good morning, church. Today is August 12th, uh, Thursday. We are on day 7 of the Bible reading plan, Facing the Future with God. Uh, especially today, so we will discuss with regard to a topic called Anticipating Heaven. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and read the two passages that are coming from Revelation 21, 1 to 5. Revelation 21, 1 to 5. I'll read it for you with ESV translation. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and first earth has passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for the husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear, a tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away, and he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Amen. This is God's word. The first heaven and earth were prepared for the first man and woman and their descendants. God had readied everything for them when he placed them in the garden. Unfortunately, as we know, our first parents sinned, ushering death and decay into God's beautiful world. Chapter 3, or Genesis chapter 3, right? Creation is in bondage to sin, and even the heavens are not clean in his sight. God has promised his people a new heaven and earth. Here's what it says, Isaiah 65, 17, prophesied by Isaiah, prophet. For behold, I create new heavens, a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. The old creation must make way for the new creation. If God is to be glorified, Jesus called this event uh, the regeneration of the earth. And Apostle Peter explained it, it, uh, it as a cleansing and renewing by fire. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 13, he explained. Maybe the Bible students are not agreed as to whether the old elements will be renewed or whether the old will be destroy, uh, destroyed and whole new creation ushered in the fact, uh, the fact that the Greek word translated new means new in character. So may lend credence to the former explanation. Even despite scripture's description, it is it's not easy actually. It's difficult to imagine what the eternal city will be like. Even those like description here. Uh, John characterizes it as a holy city. Revelation 21, 27, he says like, it says like that. And a, a, a prepared city and a beautiful city as beautiful as bright on her wedding day. Uh, so John amplifies these characteristics in Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 21 to 22. But um, the most important thing about the city is that God dwells there with His people. It tells us that God is here, uh, here with us. We are His people. The Bible gives an interesting record of the dwelling places of God. First, God walked with man in the Garden of Eden in the first place. All peoples, Adam and Eve, the people were with God. They walked with God. Then he dwelt with Israel in the tabernacle and later the temple. However, 
when Israel sinned and God had to depart from those dwellings. Later, our hope, our Lord Jesus Christ, came to earth among us. John 1.14 And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father, full of grace and truth. Today, God does not live in man-made temples, but in the bodies of His people. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 And in the church, Ephesians 2, 21 In both the tabernacle and the temple, the veil stood between man and God. That veil was torn in two when Jesus died on the cross. Therefore, opening a new and living way for God's people. Even though God dwells in believers today by His Spirit, we still have not begun to understand God or fellowship with Him as we would like. But one day, but one day, we hope that we have a, this kind of hope based on the Bible. We shall dwell in God's presence and enjoy Him forever. This is our hope, right? This must be our hope that one day we are in His presence forever in a new heaven a, on earth. The believers who first read this inspired book, I mean Revelation, must have rejoiced to know that in heaven there would be no more pain, tears, and sorrow or death. In every age, the hope of heaven has encouraged God's people in times of suffering. Even right now, we are encouraged by the fact that we, God's people, have hope that there is heaven for us where we are to be with God forever. I hope and pray that you see God's love for you and God set new heaven and earth for His people. Definitely this revelation is giving us hope that we will be with Him forever and ever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us great uh, message today. Uh, there is going to be the place, I mean heaven and earth, so we are belong to those places. Definitely, even though so you are here with us, we are your dwelling place, but we cannot fully understand uh, being with you. But later on, we have a hope that you're, we are to be in your presence and forever and ever. Even though our death is not our end, but rather there is going to be a new heaven and earth waiting for us to be with you. God, thank you for us, giving us this hope. Lord, thank you so much for giving us this grace and hope. Thank you so much for your presence. And thank you so much for your promise based on your Son, Jesus Christ. We believe that. We are now have strong faith and also this joyful uh, hope that we can have new place where we will be we will be with you forever and ever thank you god this hope in the precious name of your son jesus christ we pray amen